Trev's Hockey Show. I'm the Trev. Sweet. Anyway, go back to retired numbers. It's been a while since I've done one. And I am tackling another team first, so that's a good thing. And I figured, given the team we're talking about today, Oilers fans, I'm talking to you. I know you're upset. I know your frustration. It's not every playoff series. Well, it could be, but it's not every playoff series. You get swept by the Jets with your last three games going to overtime. But we're not here to talk about that right now. No, no, let's talk about more positive things, I guess, if you want to put it in a, te in a text like that. <clears throat> we're talking about the first number the Edmonton Oilers ever retired. In team history, we're talking about the number three, Al Hamilton. Let's talk about it. Now, I could sit here and talk about his one lone season with the Edmonton Oilers in the NHL, but that won't be doing it any justice. And you wouldn't understand the context of why his numbers retired. So we have to travel all the way back to 1972 when. The Oilers were still part of the World Hockey Association, or the WHA, which we will talk about at some point. Just because it is hockey history, it has to be mentioned. But before, like so many other players, made the jump to WHA in 1972, he did have an NHL career. He did play for the Rangers, he did play for the Sabres. Right-handed defenseman, you figure, you know, it's the hottest commodity going right now, but... In a team, in a league that wasn't necessarily as big as it is now, with already probably a major influx of right-handed shot defensemen, why not go to the rival league, right? Get your exposure. Maybe increase your value that way, you know. If NHL ever comes calling again, you're there. But that's hypotheticals. 72-73, the Oilers make their debut as the Alberta Oilers. And Al Hamilton is named their first captain in team history. Tell he held for four years. So not a bad gig for him. In his first season in the WHA. And with the Alberta Oilers, they weren't the Edmonton Oilers yet. 78 games, 14 goals. Or sorry, 11 goals. 50 assists and 61 points. So right-handed shot defenseman that puts up points. Not a bad thing at all. Next season, did 59 points. So, not dropping off. But it was 74-75 and 75-76 where he met with the injury bug. And it cost him some time. His point doubles dipped. Understandably so. In those two years, respectively, it was 25 and 54. So that's 76 games. 79 games, sorry. So, didn't do him any good, really. Obviously, the captaincy was taken away from him in time for the 76-77 season. Let him really seem to help or hurt his production at all. That was 45-point season there. And I forgot to mention, with the 1974 season, he was also a second-team All-Star in the WHA. First-team All-Star in 1978. So, that was pretty awesome. He was part of the team. For the last Avco World Cup run in 79, which they lost to Winnipeg. But upon the Oilers entering the NHL, he finished 13th all time in WHA history for games played, 15th in assists, 40th in points, and 38th in penalty minutes. So top 40 all across the board. But he did have the team record for most points in a career by a defenseman. His total WHA total totals in 455 games, 53 goals, 258 assists for 311 points. It's pretty impressive, right? Right. So just in time for the Oilers' inaugural season in the NHL. They are the Edmonton Oilers now. They switched the name over after the 72-73 season because they played more of their games at Edmonton. So that's why the name switch Alberta-Edmonton. 
And this season wasn't exactly a good one for him, the 79-80 NHL season. As he was bothered by injuries again, that only limited him to 31 games. But in those 31 games, 4 goals, 15 assists, 19 points, 20 penalty minutes. Those are his official NHL records with the Edmonton Oilers. So on the, on the surface, why would they, right? We'll get into that. He did manage to play one playoff game with them as well. So he got some playoff time in there. No points for one game. But at the end of the 79-80 season, it was announced that he was retiring due to injuries, which were nagging him for years. It was also announced at season's end that his number would be retired, which it was October 10th, 1980 at the Old Edmonton Northlands Coliseum, if you remember that. <laughs> so to answer the question, if you're, you're asking, if you, I haven't answered it already, why retires number if he only had so many points, it's because of his time with the team in the WHA. That's why. It's the same reason the Jets retired number nine, because of his time with, with them in the WHA. Why the Whalers retired number nine. You get where I'm going. But that is the story of number three in Edmonton on the rafters, and this was number 156. Just Hockey Show, and I want to thank you for tuning in. Don't think I don't appreciate the gesture, especially if you're right here. You're helping me, just as I'm helping you. Knowledge, time. What a better, what a better trade-off, right? So while you're here, give me that like. Because that red button, you know you want to hit it. Do it. Let's get to 100. Subscribe and makes you feel good. Social is in the description down below. Moving forward, I got one more idea up my sleeve for tonight. I might do it tonight. We'll see. Time permitting. But either way, in the meantime, and in between time, be looking for more videos from Trev. Later.